you've opened up Premiere Pro and you go and you click the new project button, you might be wondering, what is this? It looks completely different. And in this video, I'm gonna be showing you guys the new import and export modes inside Premiere Pro 2022. If you're new here, welcome. I'm John the Video Guy and on this channel I make tutorials on Premiere Pro and After Effects. I post once a week so if you're interested feel free to subscribe. Be sure to drop a like for the YouTube algorithm. It really helps my channel out. And with that, let's see how to use the import mode inside Premiere Pro. So when you open up Premiere Pro, what you'll want to do is click the new project button. And you know, this interface opens up and the first thing that you'll want to choose is basically at the top, your project name and project location. So in this case, I'm gonna name my project slow motion because I'm making a slow motion tutorial. And then under project location, I'm gonna click the drop down. You can choose previous areas or you can choose a location. And this is where you'll save your project. And I'm gonna click choose. So that's where the new project is gonna to save to. Now the next step is actually finding the media you wanna import inside your project. And on the left side here, you'll see some navigational areas. Um, there's your favorites, which I'll show you how to add favorites in a little bit. Then there's local, so you know, you know your home, desktop, documents, different areas on your PC or operating system that will be displayed over here. And then you have devices underneath. So here you can see my plugged in external hard drive, which is right there. So I can click on that. I can see the folders inside, or you can choose a location on your actual hard disk. So in this example, I'll click on my hard drive. I'll go find um, the folder where all my assets are. Now, when using this space, it's important to realize when you click once, you're selecting it. And when you double click it, you're going inside the folder. So since I just clicked once, I actually selected it. We don't want that, so I'll uncheck it. And what I'll want to do is actually double click on the folder I want to go into. And for example, here to add favorites, you know, all my projects are usually in the videos folder. So if I double click on the videos folder, you notice the star icon in the top right area here. You can click that and it will be added to your favorites. That way I can easily access all these projects and get to my projects a lot quicker when I'm creating a new project for the first time. Okay, so now let's import some stuff. So let's find our project panel, our project folder, which is under this one, it's called slow motion. And the assets I wanna import are these folders right here. They're called audio graphics and video folder. So all my video clips, if we double click, got two clips in the video folder. So I can click these, I can go back to source files. I can go into audio, I can click this. And you'll notice what's happening here is as I select these assets, they're being populated down below in the tray. So this is called the tray and this is basically what's gonna be imported once you click the create button. And while you're searching for content, you can also change this to grid view. I have it on list view currently, but if you choose grid view and you go into like the videos folder, you can actually preview your footage by hovering over it. And you can also change the size of the thumbnails as well by using the slider. And you have a few other options to change the order of what you're seeing, or you can also choose to see and find different pieces of media by file type. And you can also search as well. Now to the right, you'll see that you have a few options. You can copy media over, which is very helpful. If you, are cop you haven't copied your footage over from your SD card or your different drives that you recorded on, you can choose that and under the drop down, choose where you wanna copy the footage to. You can also create a new bin. So with that selected, you can have that checked, which is turned on. And for example, I can name the new bin media. And then you can also create a new sequence based on the items in the tray. And we can rename this tutorial sequence. So with that, we're pretty much started, ready to get started with our project here. I have all my items I wanna import in my tray and I'll click the create button. And you'll see what happens here in a few moments. It'll import the files. It put all those media pieces inside the bin, which it did, it's called media. And then it created the new sequence called tutorial sequence. And it basically put all those media assets into the sequence. So that's how that works. 
Now, whether you want to do it like this is a different question that you have to decide for yourself. You know, if I was editing this, I probably, I don't really want to import, you know, the thumbnail and stuff right away, you know, and then obviously I would take this audio file and I would want to synchronize it with the audio track over here. So if you don't like the way it imports, you can always do the old classic way of just going to file, import, and find your files going through here, you know, <clears throat> and you can select, you know, the different clips and import them that way. Now, the one thing to keep in mind is you can't import folders yet based on the new import mode. So, you know, if you wanted to actually import, say, if we go back to the import section, if you go to source files and you actually click this box, you want to import this folder. Now, I'll uncheck new bin and new sequence and click import. It's not going to import the folder. It's not going to make a new bin named video. So it doesn't retain the folder information, whereas in the old version, the old way of importing files, you can actually just drag and drop folders and it automatically creates new bins for you. And that can be tricky um, if you're in a situation where I am, where I'm importing audio graphics and video. I just want, you know, I want a bin called audio, import that. I want a bin called graphics, import that. And same with the video. And the, I basically want three different bins. And you can't easily do that in this situation. So it really depends what you're working on. Um, but that's one of the drawbacks I noticed. Okay guys, so that was how to use the import mode inside Premiere Pro. Let's see how to actually export a project. All right, so basically I, have, I cut to a finished tutorial that I want to export out of Premiere Pro. And to do that, you'll want to go to the top left and click on the export pane. And this looks completely different as well if you're looking at this for the first time. But it's pretty simple once you get used to it. Basically what you have to decide first is where is your video going? Do you just want to export it out just as a media file? By default, that's the only one checked. But you have options if you want to upload it directly to YouTube or other social media platforms or on Behance, Creative Cloud, or to upload an FTP file. You have these different options. Now you guys know me, I'm a YouTuber, so I'm going to check the YouTube button. Um, and what this basically does to the right side is it adds a publish drop down pane where before there wasn't a, a publish drop down pane, it basically had everything else other than the publish thing. So going down one by one here, you have, you know, the file name so you can rename it by default. It keeps it the name of the sequence in your project. And if you're uploading it to a specific platform, it will add YouTube to the end of the video title. But you can always change this, so I'm going to change it to slow motion file, and then tutorial. And then you have your location. You can change it by clicking on it. Um, I always like going to the downloads folder. That way it uploads to YouTube faster rather than uh, exporting it to my hard drive. And then presets. So to see presets, you click the drop down. You can see your automatic presets here, but if you want to see all your presets, you can click the more presets button. And this brings up this pane where you can go and actually, I think there's a lot more presets here than there were in previous versions of Premiere Pro. But basically you can search them. Say if you're looking for Apple ProRes, you can just type in ProRes and then scroll down. Say if you want Apple ProRes 422, you can click that, click OK and that adds it. Now say if you want Apple ProRes as your favorite, what you can do under more presets is when you type in Apple ProRes, you can actually add it as a favorite by clicking the star. And then you can actually click the star and it'll only show your favorites. So that's handy as well. Your favorites will also populate in the drop down menu as well. So Apple ProRes will always be here if it's one of your favorites. But in this case, we are doing YouTube, so I'm going to switch it to YouTube 1080 Full HD. Then you also you have under preset the format, so you can change the format if you wish. For YouTube, I'm leaving it at H.264. Now let's get to the fun stuff. So under publish, I tried this out basically to connect your account. I'm signed in now, but there's a button here and then you connect and you sign in. It'll open a new web browser and you sign in. Um, under here, you can select which channel if you have multiple channels on your Google account. For me, I only have my main channel here. Um, 
And then you have, you can add it to a playlist. So say if I was uploading it directly as a Premiere Pro tutorial, I could click that. In this case, I'm only, I'm gonna upload it privately and then I'll add more information later because not all of the YouTube settings are on here. You can choose public or unlisted if you wish. Under title, you can name it. So, you know, slow motion in Premiere Pro. And then you can add the description and the tags. One important note about this is I tested this before and if you add more tags or a lot of uh, text to this, it doesn't seem to upload to YouTube. So just be careful that you don't overload the description or the tags box here. To be honest, it's a little clunky using this. So I, if I was using this, you know, which I'll probably do in the future, I'd probably just leave them blank. And once it uploads to YouTube, I can see it and expand it more and I can add all my metadata in there. Because, you know, if you look at this, there is an option to actually expand this. You only get like three lines here and, you know, and same with tags. Where on YouTube, you get like a whole box that you can expand and add different things to. Then you have custom thumbnail, so you can click this and click from image file, then click the thumbnail file and choose a file. And then you can go find your thumbnail. All right, so under video, this is where you can change your video settings if you want a different frame size, different frame rate. Um, the basic settings are right here, but if you want more in depth like bit rate, you can click the more button. You can scroll down. This is where you get, you know, render maximum depth, um, your resampling, your encoding settings. So this is where you can get more, basically what you've seen before. It's just, you know, a little bit more hidden in the new version. Same with audio and all the other ones. Basically, the main difference here is you're seeing them in uh, as drop down menus where before they were in tabs and you could just go over, you know, horizontally where now it's displayed vertically. And basically over here in the bottom right is what you can see your output to be. So the video codec, the audio codec, the estimated file size, the information that used to be at the very bottom is now in the bottom right. And you can also scrub and preview your video as well. Similar to how this used to be on the left side in the previous settings, it's now on the right side. Once you're ready, you'll want to click export on the bottom right, or you can click send to media encoder and this will send this data to media encoder to encode. So that's pretty much it guys. That's how you use the import and export modes inside Premiere Pro. I hope this tutorial has helped you. My honest thoughts is I think it's getting there. It needs some updates, you know, with like importing folders as bins already. That would be really nice to see. On the export sides, there are, you know, for social media, there are a few limitations. I'd like to see a little bit more options for YouTube, maybe expanding the description and tags box, and also maybe ways to utilize markers or other data inside uh, Premiere Pro that you can use into the YouTube published settings. It would be really nice to see. I use markers inside my Premiere Pro uh, timeline. Uh, to use them as the actual chapter markers inside YouTube. So the little, uh, the chapters down below were actually markers in my Premiere Pro project. It'd be nice to see Premiere Pro or Adobe utilize that data to actually upload it to YouTube. That'd be a pretty cool integration. So I think it is pretty cool, but I think it has some ways to go on actual functionality and all the little nooks and crannies of this new feature. But I hope this was a good overview for you if you're seeing this for the first time. So feel free to drop comments down below if you guys still need you know more information on how to use this, uh, these new features and modes inside Premiere Pro. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching and we'll see you next time.